how are you? I'm very well, thank you for having nice me. Nice to have you here actually. It's a pleasure to be back in Islamabad and pleasure to be back at the Leaders in Islamabad Business Summit. So you like Pakistan or? Uh, I've been making trips here for the last couple of years on business to help grow blockchain and other technology. This is my fifth trip to Pakistan in, the lo in under two years. So. Is it fifth trip? So yes. what do you like the most over here? Food. Oh my God, Food. that's the only answer I get Food. from everybody. <laughs> it is very good, a little heavy. I always feel a yeah. little heavier when I leave, but yeah, because you know, I'm not a breakfast eater at home in the United States where I'm from. I don't really eat breakfast much, but here you, you, you can't escape the big Pakistani breakfasts. So. They're yummy, Food. right? Food and great people. Great. I have great friends uh, Thank from you. Pakistan. So. <laughs> right. They we're talking about leadership since morning. Yes. So, um, where do you see Pakistan as a person, as, as a country producing leaders? Do you think Pakistan is producing good leaders? Um, that's an interesting question. It's been harder Actually, for... Actually, you know what? Our theme is speak your mind. You can yes. talk about anything. Sure. You don't have to yeah. be very diplomatic with your answers. You can just talk about it. Well, it's a difficult question for me to answer because the people no, I you. deal with, <laughs> okay. I think, are good leaders. Um, you know, the people who have I have our friendships with, like Asfar Hassan, who's the host of this event and former Minister of Investments, and an excellent leader. My friend Mohammed Salman Anjoum, who lives in Dubai but is Pakistani, he's CEO of a company called Invoice Mate that I'm on the board of. I think he's an excellent leader and manager. So the people I've become friends with and gotten to know are. However, I can see why you asked the question because like a lot of developing countries, and I spend quite a bit of my time focused on some of them, um, there's this question being asked, how do we advance right, as, as a country? How do we grow our economy, uh, generate more jobs and income for people, and break through to be more competitive in the global marketplace? And that does take leadership, right? because it doesn't happen by accident. Uh, the countries like my native Vietnam that have started really going from you know, poor developing country to robust economy, that's happened by good government and business leadership. And so I can't answer all the questions about Pakistani's leadership, but I can tell the people of Pakistan are asking, such as the theme of this event, the big rethink, what do we need to do differently? And what do our leaders need to do differently yes. at both the government and business level? It's not just government. You can't blame government for everything. Um, I think it takes a combined collaboration of the business, educational, and government sectors. So I think I would say the leaders I know in Pakistan are good, but I think the country is really asking for more, for maybe <laughs> more but new ideas, different approaches. What about the blockchain? So, um, uh, as I mentioned, I, I'm CEO of my own firm called Blockchain for All, and for the past five years, I was president of one of the global blockchain foundations for the BSV blockchain. So I've spent a lot of my last seven years growing government and enterprise adoption of blockchains, not cryptocurrency trading, which is what gets all the attention. And I think that because cryptocurrency trading has sucked up the oxygen, um, and that's all people think about when it comes to blockchain, that has hindered and slowed down blockchain's growth, including in countries such as here, where people may be skeptical of cryptocurrency. And therefore, you don't get the investor, enterprise, or government support for blockchain technology, which can be very powerful to create more transparent, honest data for government, for enterprise, for many things. So I think that blockchain has been slowed down by that. But there are signs that it's growing. Um, I do some work in Nigeria. The government there just passed the world's first comprehensive national blockchain policy wow. to create a legal framework for the advancement of blockchain technology in the country. Oh, so they're good. trying to take a real leadership role. It's different from every country, uh, but I wish people would look at the power of blockchain as a data technology before they get all caught up in the craziness of crypto We're trading. Scared. We're still I, scared. I absolutely understand. We because as I, a nation, like, no, don't go for that. I fully understand kind of because risky. cryptocurrency trading is speculative. It's basically like gambling. And even though I don't have a problem with it personally, I totally understand why people are scared of it. And I think it's given the good blockchain use a bad name, which is unfortunate. So people like me are trying to change that. speaking your mind. 
Well, you know, it's uh, you, you have to. Thank situation. you very much. Your throat is not, you know, ah, since you're traveling. Good. Yes, and I do then, travel a lot. So, this is for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and good luck to Pakistan. Ah, uh, thank you. One day we'll have blockchain too. You will. Thank you.